20 kilos of school shop. Now that is a cod. All fishing stories start with a journey, and our journey has brought us here to Painesville to meet a fellow by the name of Pete. How are you, Pete? Good, thanks, Pete. Now, Pete runs a great business down here called Bull Cruises. Now, mate, just explain to me a little bit about what Bull Cruises is down here in Painesville. Yeah, Bull Cruises has been on the Gippsland Lakes for 64 years, hiring out boats to people. Yep. We have uh, 13 boats in our fleet and we uh, yep. have everything for the families, to the 10 blokes who come down for a weekend or the blokes who come down to do the Twin Rivers fishing comp. Yep, which is a pretty big comp. It is actually, yeah mm. it is. In fact, uh, one of our boats won the comp in 2014. Nice. We were pretty pleased about that. I'd be that. very happy about that. <laughs> I um, I dropped on dropped in here to see you on, uh, a couple months ago, mate, when I was on my way yep. back from Lake Tyres and I thought, you know what, this would be a fantastic trip for our, our viewers to see and for us to do. So um, we're here now. You can see my boat right here. It's going to be tied on the back of my boat. Yeah, right here. <laughs> right here, which is what we're going to go have a look at right now. So, Pete, this is the 42 foot Crusader. It is. And you've got three similar to this, or sorry, two others similar to this. Correct, yeah. So, um, What's the history behind these? Uh, all three boats were built in the 70s, yep. and even uh, even today they're still the best chartered boat in the fleet. Yep. Because they hold 10 people and yep. uh, great platform going for a fish. Exactly. Bucks, bucks turn. Yep. Uh, even just a family holiday. Yep. Yep. Which is what we're having today. It's just a few weeks before Christmas. And we're very excited because Santa's coming. Um, mate, can you just give us a rundown on how the boat works? We'll go downstairs, have a look around, yeah, and just, sure. um, we'll yeah. just give it a run over just so I don't crash into anything, mate. <laughs> well, I used to drive my little tinny around, not this big 42 beast, foot beast. The bigger the boat, the easier it is. Yeah? Yep. Sounds good to me, mate. Key on, yep. start button. It's that simple. <laughs> when you're sick of the noise, the stop button. Start and stop, it doesn't get much easier than that, does it? It is, it's that simple. Forward, back, side to side. That's it. Excellent. The boats are covered to seven knots, 13 kilometres an hour, so yep. literally at that sort of speed you can't get into any trouble. No, and you can uh, enjoy the views around you. Absolutely. Which well, On a day like today, you'd be driving upstairs and enjoying the fish. Fish land has plenty to offer. <laughs> Absolutely, it does, yeah. Beautiful. Even some fish. Some fish, you reckon? Well, um, that's the thing. You've got to know the locals to find out where the fish are. And I believe you can put me onto a few spots on the map. Be happy to. And you do provide maps in the office? No, maps on the boat right oh, behind there, you there. there you go. We've got maps right here, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, uh, what else do I need to know? Anchor, radio, safety equipment, obviously. Yeah. You're going to give us a full briefing, full briefing and all, the, all this sort of stuff anyway. So, guys, um, I'm really excited. This is something new for me and, uh, and the Ozfish crew. Well, I'm here with... Captain Splash, a.k.a. David Fairhurst. How are you? Good, Nick. That's the way. Mate, we're on a bit of a family fishing trip today. Yep. And uh, I believe Brim, Flathead and White Inn are on the menu. That's the ones, yeah. No better bait than fresh mussels. And Pete assures me there's plenty here we can grab. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. Load up our esky full of mussels. We've got plenty of fresh bait.
The other great thing about the Bulls Cruisers, there's a full petrol station on the pier. How good is that? Skipjack. Ripper. Bring it up here, mate. Let's go. Taylor. And um, you've only been in trolley for five minutes, Dave. That's very crucial when you catch a skipjack, isn't it, Dave? That you don't put your hands anywhere near these trebles. That's right. Because they, these things jump around, as you can see, very fierce. And that's the last thing we want to do is be stuck out here with the treble in our finger. That's not a bad size, isn't it? Mm. About yeah, 30, 34 centimetres, about mm -hmm. that. Good, mate. First one on the board. That's the one. All right. I better hurry up and rig my line. Where are we going to put him? Oh, we'll have to put him in the esky, I think, mate. inside cruising down the tambo here. I'm pretty sure they're tail up. So we're just going to come up on them now. We've got Captain Splash in there. Steering for me. Well, as we headed down the Tambo River, looking for an old jetty to tie off on, we're going to throw the rods out the back for the night and relax. Because tomorrow we've got a pretty big day cruising around the lakes. We've also got some friends of ours on the lakes from Merv Hughes Fishing, Merv Hughes and Jason Kennedy. We're going to go over and help them get some good shots for their show and then we're going to head out and search for some fish for ours. Well we just pulled up here at the Tambo River and it's just gone dark. We're tied up to one of the local moorings. Uh, Captain Splash and I have just thrown a couple of rods out the back, a couple of brim rods, got the glow sticks happening and we're just sitting here relaxing watching the rods while the girls are inside watching a movie. I'm looking down here because we've got some nice saladas that have just been made up with some ham and tomato on them. A bit of salt and pepper. It looks absolutely fantastic because I'm starving. So we're going to stay here for the night. We're going to get bright and early and uh, cruise up the river. I've got my boat out the back here so we might cruise up and down the river and maybe search for some brim or flathead in the, in the, in the tinny. And then um, we might explore the lakes a bit too because we're out here for a couple of days. Okay, so it's a good fish. He doesn't want to give it up the ghost. Oh, it's an eel. It's actually an eel. I thought he hit pretty hard. <laughs> Bloody eel. <laughs> well, you know, you're going to get these things at night. He's a big eel too. Big, slimy, tangly eel. I'm going to need a pretty big rag. Yeah. I'll show you my pocket here. Yeah. And, um... Can you the and they can bite. We're gonna we're gonna put this guy back, but I tell you what, he was very fun. I'm like yeah. I suppose that's one of the sort of. Uh oh. <laughs> ah, there they go. They're um they can get their way out of anything. These guys, very much like a snake. <laughs> but they're um I tell you what, yeah. On like gear, these things are fantastic. Anyway, it's time for him to go back. So. Off he goes. Well, folks, we weren't expecting that. Although, when you're fishing at night, eels are going to be around. But, uh, 
and my robe's going zzzz, like, oh, what's this huge brim? I was thinking, no, nah, no, nah, real. Dave, now we had a bit of tailor on that as bait, didn't we, mate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did too. Yeah. All right, we'll have to throw another piece out because that was fun. So we've been very, very excited about this. Uh, the throttles have arrived, Ben. Yes, they have, Chris. We've been waiting a while for them. We're pretty excited ourselves. They're a new design out of the US, the first design of its kind, the RED, real engine design, which yep. basically means it's uh, no side plates on it. Rear access, it provides for tighter tolerances. Look, it's got everything you need in terms of the thick bow wire, double anodized, the braid band, the double anodized uh, spool. Yep. Comes in three sizes, okay. in the 30, 40, and 50. Oh, great. So you've got all applications sort of covered, haven't you? Well, that's right. You've got everything from, you know, your brim and bass marker through to your estuary species and, and right up to your snappers and, uh, and the like. Wow, okay. Well, one thing I like, you know, none of us admit this, but it's a pretty sexy looking piece of kit. And I really like that. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about getting out fishing with these. Absolutely. And looking forward to a trip later on in the year, perhaps, and yeah. we can give them a bit of a run. Yeah, absolutely. They had a lot of buzz at AFTA recently, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It was uh, our most popular offer that we had on the, sh on the stand. The feedback from the stores was absolutely amazing. Everyone loved it. And ridiculous value. Like, obviously, we won't go into prices here, but the, some of the prices you quoted to Mick and I before, we were, we were actually stunned. Yeah, I think people will probably do a double take on it, um, but it just shows that it's pretty typical of what Jarvis Walker do, providing yeah. the, the value for money and, and a, a great product. Fantastic. Well, I'm very, very excited, and we can't wait to get out and have a fish with it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we've got any choice of a six foot six spin, seven foot three estuary, a seven foot boat. You know, all your applications are covered. And without going into the pricing, but it is all one price point, makes it really easy. Mickey the man, he's on again. We've got Mickey Dell over here in his boat, just about to pick up the camera man. But Frank said, just hang on a second. I can feel uh, something. 37 and a half. Yeah, I reckon uh, 37 and 38, half. 39. Yeah, well, 37 yeah. and a half. So to try and support the fish. Yeah. Nice blue lip on him. Yeah. Good, good healthy fish, aren't they? Good strong Hooked fish. Hooked in the corner of the mouth, yeah. that's where you want them. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's healthy on, that's East Gippsland. Yeah, on the crab. Yeah. Healthy East Gippsland brim. And that's why you all line up in, in July. That's it. Um, the, the classic, the Brim Classic that's on here, the Twin Rivers Brim Classic. So the 14th and 15th of July this year. That's right. So a couple of weeks. If you haven't signed up, sign up. And if you find this man, fish next to him. You have every, every chance. Two generations of Fairhurst, both loving their fishing. Here, yeah, Skippy, Skippy, Skippy. And not the kangaroo variety. Good fish. Oh, look at him jump, that's great. That's what I love about Taylor. I mean, that's why they call them skipjack, because they skip across the top of the water like that. Now, the idea is try not to let them throw the hook, because that's when they're skipping across the top of the water. That's exactly when they're going to throw that hook. When they bury down deep, you've got to keep, keep as much tension on them as you possibly can. No, that's in lip. So I'm going to bring this around here for Dave the net. I'll try and keep the tension on him. That's it. Now you've got sharp teeth on him, which I just found out. So that's, this is this little guy. We're going to use him for some bait later on. Keep him nice and fresh because they do make a fantastic bait. That's great. That's good fun. We've, um, we're just trawling across the lake to hit to one of our destinations and that's the Beauty of sitting on these um, bull cruisers, you can just cruise around just as slow as you like, taking, taking your time and getting to your destination and still catch fish. So that's fantastic. Nice old tailor. Well, we've docked the mothership and we're in the little ship. 
Well, the little boat, and we're cruising up to a place called Nungurna. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Now, we've been told there's a few fish up here being caught, so we thought we'd come up here and uh, have a look around, throw some bait in, throw a few lures around and see what's about. Uh, try that for a couple of hours and head back to the mothership and then back to base camp. I've got to love it down here on these Gippsland Lakes. Even the pole markers have street signs and directions from where to go. Right, off we go. Okay, just gotta put one of my black magic whiting snatches on. Oh, there's no fish here, let's go. <laughs> oh, there is fish here. <laughs> I just said no fish here, let's go. And you go, I've just had a bite. Oh. And I'm on. Definitely something there. What's this? Flatty. Train on the muscle. Beautiful. My favourite eating fish, Dave. Little KL1Os. Great little hooks. Now, when they're little or a bit smaller, the flathead, that's when they're at their most dangerous with their spikes, and they will get you. So the spikes coming off, they're deadly. <laughs> they will make you bleed. Anyway, he's only a little guy. Off you go, mate. Bottom bounce in here on this nice flat lake, and we have a whiting. Now these, are a beautiful eating fish. They're a very sweet whiting. This one's a little bit small. I know Dave is very happy to hear there's whiting here. Now this is what you call your sand whiting. A lot of people in Western Port Bay, uh, sorry, West in Port Phillip, we use these to catch snapper. Best way to hold any whiting is around the head because that's where the, the scales frill up and you get a good grip on them, otherwise they slip and slide out of your hands. It's a good start for a little sand whiting. But he's only a little guy, so we've got to return him. Let's see, Dave. What are you going to bring up for us, mate? We've got a smorgasbord of fish around us. Little whiting. That's a little sandy. <laughs> I believe you do that quite often, Dave. You know what? You are the best catch and release fisherman I've ever met. <laughs> Mate, look, it's all about um, not, not harming the fish. And I'll tell you what, you're doing a great job. Ah, oh, the little ones are good. I've been using the little ones. Oh, I'm on. <laughs> They do, the little KLs are fantastic. I think I just caught your whiting that you got rid of, mate. No, that's bigger than mine. That is a bit bigger, actually. That's almost worth keeping. Now, I know any whiting fishermen in Western Port be going, what are you doing keeping something like that? But this is a sand whiting, and sand whiting don't actually get much bigger. They got a very, very sweet white meat, and they're a great looking fish. <laughs> and very slippery. All right, buddy, he's itching to get back, and that's where he's going, so bon voyage, buddy. We, um, we caught up with the guys from Merv Hughes Fishing this morning. They put us on to some really good fish, gave us some really good bait as well. Said so the fish are here, boys, we're about to go have some lunch, and just as they take off, the weather turned really nasty and we couldn't keep an anchor where they were fishing, so we missed out. But that's okay, we might have another crack there tomorrow. Nah. I reckon I must have had two on and one dropped off. We just had a ferry go past, so we've got a bit of a swell going on here. That's a bit better, Dave. What do you reckon, mate? 
I'm going to measure backwards. We're looking at 20 centimetres. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is big for Sam Whiting. I know up in New South they get him really big. I think another name for him is Yellowfin Whiting, but I'm not 100%. I don't generally target them very often. Off you go, mate. <laughs> nice catch. There you go. Off he goes. Hey, two little ones. Yeah, he just come around the head. He's going back. Go on, Splash. Send him home. What is this, I wonder? Maybe it's a flatty. I'm not sure, actually. Oh, no. She's nasty and she's staying in the water. That's a gurnard. Uh -huh. I've brought a gurnard up. A lot of people know. I'm not a fan of these because I have been stung once and it um, was in excruci excruciating pain. Now, there's a few tricks to these. There's a few, if you do get stung by one, get hot water onto the wound straight away and, and seek medical advice. Um, and the other thing, if you do decide to keep them, they are called the poor man's crayfish. They do taste quite nice, but um, I'm not willing to bring it in the boat to find out. So, see you later, Mr. Gurnard. You're going to be swimming off as soon as I get that hook out of you. Very carefully. So we've woken up here at the Nicholson River, down at the Princess Highway Bridge where we were docked last night. And uh, we're heading home. It's wet, it's miserable, but we're gonna make the most of it. There's a few little locations on the way home. We're gonna try and hit them, see if we can produce something. And if not, we've had such a great weekend. It is absolutely fantastic. Now this is something I suggest anyone should come and try with your friends, family. It'd be a very affordable holiday. And you're gonna have so much fun. You're limited by nothing. You can go anywhere you want in these lakes uh, and enjoy what lakes have to offer. And there's so much where you only got to see a small part of what the uh, lake system has to offer. As I'm talking to you now, I'm watching Taylor jump over the side. So Captain Splash, I'll be getting those rods out the back. And uh, yeah, so look, look up the Bull Cruises. So they've got, they've got a big, uh, big fleet. They've got quite a few boats in the fleet. It's de definitely something everyone should try. It's uh, one that I've been wanting to do for a while and I'm really glad we did it, so, and we will be back.